Hello, I'm Joe Taraska. Today I'm going to talk to you a bit about how to select an attorney for a personal injury lawsuit. Now first, I hope you're never in a position where you have to pick an attorney to help your family or yourself for injuries that you've sustained. But in the event that that has occurred, it's essential that you pick an attorney that will do the best job for you and obtain the fairest result. Now, let me start off by telling you a little bit about myself so that you know where this advice is coming from. I've been practicing law for well over 40 years, as you can tell from the white hair. And uh, my specialties are in personal injury, medical malpractice, and products liability. So let's start off. How do you first of all get the name? Well, there's a lot of sources out there. There's advertising, there's word of mouth. You can call your local Florida or state bar association and they'll give you a list of names who practice in your area. You can also use the internet to search for names. But once you have a name, it's important that you then evaluate that individual. How do you go about doing that? First, every state has a bar association. A bar association is a professional organization that the attorneys of that state must belong to. The bar association will allow you to log on. It's a public source. And when you do that, you can tell whether or not the attorney that you're evaluating has ever been disciplined in any fashion, how long he's been practicing, whether he's been certified by examination in areas of specialty, for example, trial law. In addition, you can see what areas of specialty he lists as he or she lists as their specialties. In addition to that, you can next check other sources for evaluation. And a very common source is a computer link called Martindale and Hubble. Martindale and Hubble is a professional peer reviewing organization. They rate lawyers by letters with the highest rating being AV. That would be the highest rating in legal ability and ethics. These lawyers are rated by not only other lawyers in the community, by the judges also before whom they practice. In addition to that, there are other rating services such as avo, avvo.com, LinkedIn, and you might take a look at something like findlaw.com. Once you've kind of looked through those and you've got a sense that the attorney that you are considering has the proper credentials, the next thing to determine is who's his team, his or her team. Is that lawyer going to be practicing on your case alone, or does he or she have another attorney working with them? Who's the paralegal, if any, assigned to the case? It's most important that you, when you check this, that you ensure that this is not a referral service. You do not want to sign up with a service that is simply going to refer you at their discretion to some other law firm or lawyer to handle your case. You want to know who your team is. The next thing you want to consider when you're looking for an attorney is who pays the costs of your litigation. Most law firms will cover the costs, and this is appropriate and ethically responsible for your litigation and only ask you for return of costs out of a recovery. There should be a clause in your contract that exempts you from paying any costs in the event that your case is not successful. Talking about the contract, consider the following. What are the fees that the attorney wants to charge you when he's looking at your case? Most fees are set by the Bar Association. You will find that cases that involve more complex litigation, like medical malpractice or products liability, carry higher fees. These will often be approved by the State Bar Association or a judge who is overseeing the case. Cases that are less complex, such as auto cases, may carry lower sets of fees. In addition, we talked about costs. Who is going to carry the costs of the litigation? Finally, the contract should have a provision in it that allows you to cancel the contract in the, in, in the event that the individual who is representing you is not doing the job that you feel is appropriate. There should be a provision that states that in the event that you are canceling the contract for cause, that you are not responsible for the fees and costs that have been incurred to date. 
Lastly, let's give some consideration after we've done that, that once you've selected an attorney, how do you evaluate the progress they are making in the case? Your attorney, first of all, should be staying in touch with you. Most attorneys who are practicing in the specialties in which you are trying to select them will try and bring you up to date at least monthly. In addition, if you make a phone call to your attorney, it's essential that they get back to you in a timely fashion. Most attorneys who are practicing in these subspecialties of personal injury, medical malpractice, products liability, should be able to call you back or have a member of their team call you back within 24 hours. Lastly, one way that you can evaluate an attorney is to take a look at the costs <clears throat> that they are expending. There is no reason that you cannot ask the attorney for a printout of the costs on a monthly basis or every other month. By looking at the costs, you'll have a good idea of what they are doing and how well they are doing it. Don't be shy. That's the most important rule when working with an attorney. Remember, the attorney works for you. You're not working for the attorney. If you have questions, you ask them. If you are getting appropriate responses, then you have probably selected the attorney that should be representing you. If on the other hand, you feel that you are not being called back in a timely manner, or the attorney is not giving you responses that satisfy you, it's time to evaluate whether you should continue in that representation. I wish you luck, and as I stated at the beginning, I hope that you never have need for a personal injury attorney. But should you have such need, please consider the things that I've mentioned to you today. Thank you.